Hello friends, we are going to learn about a kind of art called collage. Collage is a lot of fun. I did not get into it until I started teaching art um, to elementary and middle school. It is something that can be very, very simple or very complex. It just depends how much you want to go into it. That's C-O-L-L-A-G-E, not college like you go to college, but collage, it's a French word. The ingredients you're gonna need for this particular recipe, some pictures. You can cut these out of newspapers, magazines, or catalogs, or wherever. You'll need some glue, either sticks or liquid. I'm gonna close my parentheses. You'll need some scissors, some markers. Uh, you might also use an X-Acto knife. with parents' permission and being careful and all that good stuff. So, I went through some old magazines that I have at the house. Make sure you ask first. And I just tore out some pages. I don't even know what kind of artwork I'm gonna make yet. This is the part where collage is interesting because you don't know what you're gonna find. You might come up with a theme in advance, but you still don't know what pictures you're gonna find, and that's what makes it interesting. I'm not gonna be making a very big one. Now, when I get started, okay. So now the key to making a good collage, an interesting collage, is gather some images that may or may not be connected because you are going to find ways to connect them. When you cut them out, you're not really going to be looking to make a rectangle out of them. For example, I might I see a lot of people that will start out by cutting this picture out and wanting to glue it down. That's a thing you can do, but it's a little bit less interesting. Instead, you're going to very carefully cut right along the edges of exactly what you want to cut out. It may require, especially on these sides, to make it interesting for you to kind of invent your own lines. So I'm going to follow this right along here, maybe, and come in, maybe come back this way, maybe come along here, come back out for this road, because I don't really want it to look like a rectangle. Now, if you are a little bit older and you have permission from your parents, or you can get some parents to help you out with this, grandparents, aunts, uncles, whomever, an X-Acto knife is a really nice tool for this as well because it lets you get into those details a little bit faster and closer. You wanna have something underneath, like this piece of cardboard. the surface.
Now, as you can see, I was the whole time I was very careful to cut away from my hands. Also, I was made sure that I asked the permission of an adult before I got started. I was the adult. I gave myself permission. Uh, this is really more for my rising sixth graders and definitely only for people who have asked permission to use a sharp knife. But it does get let you get really tiny details. So that's cool. All right, so I have cut out some stuff. There's things I haven't used yet, and that's okay. I can save those for next time. I also have some really cool green patterns that I could use to make like a green alien sky. That would have been nice. Um, various trees, all kinds of things. Not everything gets used on every collage. You have to be able to edit down and use what matters. Now, as I was working, my theme kind of came into my head. It's going to be a terrible trip. The worst vacation ever. Or possibly best job ever, I'm not sure. Um, there's a lot going on here, so that's just how it is. So I'm gonna start taking it apart. Now, I'm probably not gonna use the person, just the water. I might save him for another trip. I have my lizard. It's over here. So I've got everything cut out and arranged how I want it. I'll show you if you are using an X-Acto knife because you are, like I said, a rising sixth grader and or you have permission from your adults. You can do things like this with an X-Acto knife that you can't really do with scissors. That's probably about as far as I can go. That lets you get effects like that, which is pretty cool. All right, so first I'm gonna cut off some of the water here. Just chosen that for its ability to be the sky, essentially. Now you have to work from the back to the front. as you are layering these, I'm not even put that upside down.
there. And your goal throughout all of this is to make a scene, not just a random collection of pictures. So it will look like some things are close and some things are far away, but you can do weird things, weird things with size and juxtaposition, I'll say that again, juxtaposition. That means sticking things next to each other that may not necessarily go together. My final couple steps is I'm gonna go ahead and trim the edges to where I want them. I'm not gonna try and make it into a rectangle, that's just what big rectangle thinks, you, thinks it needs to be perfectly rectangular on all sides. Not the boss of me, big rectangle. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, I like that. Now, because um, I kept all of my work on the back, can actually come back in with a Sharpie or other marker. That's basically it. I can keep playing with this for hours and hours and hours. And you thought you were gonna be cooped up with nothing to do.